Hello everybody, this is Nitakshara here. I, on behalf of Simply Access, will be conducting this short webinar on project management techniques. And we will be speaking about one particular aspect over here in detail. Now, this topic is all about project management, where we are going to understand why project management is necessary these days in this world. When we really speak about projects as such, this terminology has developed over a couple of decades maybe and really gained importance too much uh, since maybe hardly uh, two to three decades actually. So why we'll understand that? So let's begin. If we really look at project management, what is this? What is project management? So overall, whenever we are talking about developing something new, bringing something unique into this world, either in the form of an invention or in the form of an improvement or through incremental improvements or anything such as that, we are talking about projects. Because whenever there is anything new, you want to try something, there will be a process of conducting experimentation, conducting some trials, conducting some designs and making something into a form of a particular outcome. And that outcome is going to be used later on by the operations. So that, as such, we are talking about the connection between the project projects and operations. So if I have to give you an example, uh, if you're looking at a particular company, which is manufacturing uh, a set of goods, let's say into uh, sports goods or uh, electronic goods or automobiles, if they are manufacturing that completely comes into operations because there is nothing new which is being done every day on the shop floor. So when we are talking about manufacturing, it is essentially about operations. But whenever we are talking about anything new which needs to be manufactured later, before manufacturing, you need to have some sort of trial and error. You need to have a lot of research and development, wherein there will be a lot of stakeholders, scientists, marketing and business development people to give their inputs, and even operations management people to give some sort of inputs about how that thing can be manufactured. Accordingly, the project management team will be coming together they will be evaluating some resources. They will be putting a, a, putting a particular plan and the team which is involved in project management, the core team as well as the extended stakeholders team will come together to give that particular outcome. And when we are speaking about outcome, we are talking about a particular product design, a particular process, or maybe something which can be used for commercial benefits later on when the operational cycle begins. Having said this, let us understand what exactly is included in the project management ecosystem. We are talking about a chain of systematically linked activities in a chronological order, which are interconnected with each other. Every project will have a start and a finish. That means every project is unique and it is going to be temporary. For every particular outcome, the set of activities which you perform will be conducted only once in a lifetime. And that is where when we are talking about project management, we have to maintain that time schedule very, very strictly because in today's world, we are falling short of time. The world is very dynamic and time lost is an opportunity lost. And that's why it is very, very essential to manage those projects in the constraint of time strains. Next is we are talking about a very structured approach because Wherever we are talking about any particular activity, you need to ensure that you, you're using a particular structure, a particular methodology to ensure that your project outcome is achieved. And there is where in that particular frame of time, in that particular um, uh, dedicated deadline, you will need as a project manager to move those particular resources, to utilize those resources, including the people's talents from start to finish, till you ensure that your outcome is received. And when we talk about project management, finally, we are looking at all those factors which are interconnected with each other. Every single thing which you take a look at in project management will be like an interconnected activity with one another. We will be looking at the critical elements of project management. And when we do so, I'll be explaining to you how each of them is linked to one another and how it is important to not cut the link between because one single factor missed out is going to be an impact on your overall project. Well, to move forward, we are now going to look at examples of the projects. So when we are looking at projects, I give you uh, some explanation about how it is different than typical manufacturing. 
But if you really look, look around, we are looking at all those activities which are being under construction, maybe something under development, maybe something which is being repaired or anything else. And these are the examples. So infrastructure project, step out of your home and turn around the corner. If you have some kind of building which is being constructed, that is a project because construction will be finished later on. And of course, the final apartments or the office spaces will be rented out for which the money will be coming out later on. Construction of a new railway line, repairing of the roads and highways, of course, a project. Coming to research and development, you see so many new pharmaceutical products which are being registered with the US FDA, with the United Kingdom medical authorities. You have new cosmetic products coming out in, in there. A new fairness cream, a new anti-aging cream, new hair fall solution, new moisturizing lotion. What is this? Everything which is new. New food products, a new energy drink, for example. Then coming to software projects, we have new applications for mobiles which are being there. There are updates and upgradations which are there. Absolutely. And you may have softwares which are being conduct, uh, you know, uh, made for different corporates for use or maybe for even personal use. And coming to environmental projects where we are looking at uh, some aspects which are non-monetary, but they are more philanthropic or entrepreneurial in nature, so social entrepreneurship, as we say. So you'll have maybe the cleanup drives in some part of the world or maybe restoration of forest lands. Now, if we really need to look at the time frame of the project, we will see that every project goes through a life cycle. A life cycle from start to the finish. The people are supposed to ensure that they use the available resources in a very, very constructive and a productive manner without wasting them because eventually there is even a monetary budget. Whatever resources you purchase, whatever resources you hire, uh, human resources, you will need to pay money for, for that. And for everything else together, put together, you will have a, a, a solid budget which is already approved before even the project gets sanctioned. So let us take a look at the particular time uh, life cycle over here and how it starts. So I'm going to take a step back before the project start and go behind the objective. So every project will have an objective. We are talking about an objective, let's say development of something new, maybe a collection or compilation of a new market research database, which will be used for further activities, further studies. Or maybe it can even be sold. For example, IMS Global. Maybe you have global data. These are all database and research company sites from which people can purchase, right? Purchase the database and use it for their own further research. But what happens before the database is made? That is a project. So that could be one of the objectives here where you are employing human resources, you are taking licenses, you are collecting a lot of data, compiling and putting it in a logical fashion. Or it could be something like, uh, there is an automobile company which is coming up with a new car model, which is going to give you high mileage, improved fuel efficiency, improved speed and comfort to the riders and passengers. So there is where you have an objective. Now the objective is set and sometimes the companies have multiple projects which are being done. And then there is a project selection based on the ultimate need, the urgent need of the company. There may be some 10 to 15 projects in uh, evaluation stage, but only hardly two to three gets, get selected for a particular year, depending upon the strategic objectives of the company of that year. Once the project is selected based on the budgetary activities, based on the project charter uh, evaluation and all, you are now going to be in the state where project allotment takes place. In this mini stage, you have the selection of the project manager. Now, when we are going to take a look at initiating of the project activities, we are talking about the kickoff. There is a kickoff meeting which formally introduces the project in the company system. It is also a formal communication to all the stakeholders and the entire company as a whole that this project has been initiated. Next is going to be the planning where we look at the broad level objective and then we start making the detailed plans with respect to collecting but approving the final budgets. We look at uh, seeing what are the resources which can fit into the budget. We try to look at the end deadline and try to make the interim deadlines. We try to set in the roles and responsibilities, even hire actual, work, actual doers in the project who are going to do the hands and legs of the project team, of course. And there will be a comprehensive project plan 
which will be like a road map for the project to move from the execution part to the finish to the end part then comes the implementation where it is now time to execute all the activities according to the plans which have been set up in this implementation stage you will have procurements which will start you will have team members will start interacting with each other they will make the interim deliverables they will try to come up with some prototypes which will be taken for testing and analysis till we get the final prototype we'll have quality parameters which will be checked and then finally encompassing everything else there is another stage which actually begins right from the kick off that is a tracking and controlling stage in the pmi language we call it the monitoring and controlling that is where we are a role of a project manager which we are going to see is very very critical because it is our responsibility to ensure that all the uh, activities are undertaken in that particular frame of time without any delays and of course if there are any dangerous situations if there are any critical situations then communicating with the right stakeholders to get the necessary approvals okay so tracking and controlling is all about that while we are doing the implementation we will notice as the time passes as we are using the resources and converting them we are completing the project gradually which takes us closer to the outcome okay now let me give you an example so if this is one prototype can everybody see this particular bluetooth model of jbl this is just uh, this is just an example which i'm giving you so a prototype will be in the form of a product which obviously will not be for sale it will be a sample product but all your designs will be ready all your specifications will be ready and that will be the end of the project once when everything is completed now what happens is after the closure the design specifications all the documentation all the details of the raw materials and the vendors of the interim components will be put together and combined and they will be given uh, to the operations management team as a handover document because now based on the project which has been completed the operations people will be taking over and doing a rolling model of manufacturing is this concept clear so far about how we go about conducting the activities in the project and managing all those activities and managing all those critical details from start to finish because this is going to be a very very important concept when we are looking at project management all the other critical elements the 10 important pillars which we look at with respect to project management these will be scattered in a systematic way across throughout the life cycle and that is something which i'm going to take you through in the next slide initiating planning execution monitoring and control and close out these are all the terminologies which are accordance with the pmi all what we are going to discuss over here these are in line with the global standards set by the project management institute usa but we have slightly modified these terms because this is not a pmp workshop right let's move forward now when we are looking at the key elements the critical 10 pillars which i spoke about so these are again congruent with the terminologies which have been set forth by the project management institute usa so to start with when we look at projects important aspects are the stakeholders the stakeholders you are going to determine how the project will be moved ahead the important initial stakeholder is going to be the market the market place where your consumers are going to give you feedbacks maybe for improvements or maybe the internal people in within your organization who are have determined the need of making the project in a particular way because there is an objective and there is a desired outcome respect with respect to the objective and that is where we are talking about stakeholders management when you are also looking at stakeholders we must consider even those stakeholders which come before the project is being initiated and which also will come after the project will be completed so operations management people the end user these will be the end end time stakeholders the end user actually their inputs also come in the form of prior uh, before the project starts because we are going to eventually take their responses to create something new your vendors your subject matter experts your authorities all these things are also going to be under the stakeholders because eventually the way your product needs to be developed will be in accordance with what has been given by the project uh, subject matter expert and 
their inputs are necessary so they are going to monitor the maneuver the projects in some or the other way your vendors who are going to give you the raw materials and the components they are also going to be your stakeholders because depending upon their material delivery your project timelines are going to be impacted then coming to local authorities where some sometimes especially in tightly regulated segments such as pharmaceuticals or food you need to have a particular license before you can start experimenting or start developing a particular product now these authorities these legal advisors these lawyers patent experts uh, patent officers these are also your critical stakeholders and these are necessary to be contacted and uh, approached at the right time so that your project does not really have any problems in during the time of completion next come the scope of activities so scope is exactly the boundary within which the activity should be completed now what happens is if you don't follow the scope you are going to go beyond your budget and your timeline again i'm going to give you an example of a company is developing a new product range of uh, uh, jelly fruit drinks which are nutritious and these are uh, these are also having some herbal components and all so these are basically organic fruit juices and um the particular objective is to develop a strawberry flavored fruit drink which will be having a component of vitamins and minerals okay that is a scope now all the activities will be conducted only in the boundaries of scope maybe trying a different activity with respect to a milk based product is going to be out of scope because that is not what the objective is this is a fruit based water based drink so anything with respect to milk will be out of scope anything with, with respect to malt based energy drinks will be out of scope now project scope helps us to determine where we need to focus and what activities we are not supposed to do well coming on forward the scope will determine what are the kind of nutrients you need to have right the nutrients which we, with respect to the strawberry pulp the fruit pulp maybe uh, the raw materials in the form of vitamins and minerals additives sugar sugar substitutes uh, preservatives water and the raw uh, the packing material of course so these are going to the procurements which will be derived from the scope you will be also looking at a schedule based on the availability of the raw materials based on the timeline which you make those variants of the fruit drinks and try and test them separately you will also have the budget which will be there the budget with respect to how much of procurements you will need to do what is the cost of the raw materials that you need to incur what are the prices you need to pay then of course you will have the risks so risks are something which are in uh, changeable depending upon what kind of industry you belong to so risks are anything which can go wrong sometimes there are positive risks too but in due course of project management we also usually try to look at uh, the negative risks what are the impacts which will be uh, happening on the project if a particular product variant fails so that helps you to identify what are the alternative plans b plans that is plan b or c which need to be uh, kept ready at hand then comes your quality so quality is about understanding the parameters of the end product and looking at what you do you really need to achieve so for example giving you an example over here if we are talking about this fruit drink the quality is that um, every bottle of food drink which i'm going to make it is going to be 330 ml the flavor has to be of a particular level the sweetness level should be so much so much, so much. the assay the amount of straw, the amount of uh, critical ingredients should be so and so so if i say that vitamin a in this particular fruit drink is let's say 500 international units then it cannot be 600 in every bottle it cannot be 400 it has to be 500 so that is where we are talking about the quality parameters which we need to check and then coming to team management which is very very important where we talk about who is going to be involved when if you are talking about uh, let's take an example of the software industry here so you will have software developers you will have analysts software analysts you will have the people who are involved in quality analysis and quality control so who will be starting the project who will be involved when all those activities will be discussed when we talk about the team management of course coming to communications 
very very important because the way you communicate it has there has to be a flow of information between all the stakeholders at the right time and there is where communication is very very important and followed by documentation where you need to put everything in writing so that whenever you put the folder in archival there is no problem in retaining in the information this serves as maybe a guidance for other projects on similar lines or it could also give us some insights about what could go wrong and where we need to put in some checks and controls even in a better way the lessons learned as far as the pm item is concerned the project handover document the project life cycle document everything comes under documentation now we have very well discussed about all these 10 pillars but it does not mean that because i have discussed about documentation at the at the last it does it comes only last everything is going to have a priority at their different intervals so we need to ensure that everything is intermingled so like we said you need to look at take a look at the stakeholder the stakeholders over here and we will be looking at uh, how its stakeholder will be involved at when so there are some stakeholders who are involved right at the beginning of the project there will be other stakeholders who will come later on procurements usually start in the start of the project during the execution or sometimes even before the execution and other people uh, who, who will be involved there later on they can give their requirements or procurements and maybe during the uh, implementation stage also at a later stage you will need some other uh, requirements and uh, usually procurements will not be happening towards the close out stage because all those things which have been bought will be converted later on the risks are also usually high during the start of the project but taper towards the end schedule obviously we need to look at the deadlines we need to look at everything else team obviously team members work and uh, at different intervals and the reason why i have highlighted communications over here is because that is a critical topic which is going to be the agenda today and we are going to spend around 15 minutes discussing only about the communication but before that we also need to ensure what do you mean by project management and what are the soft skills which are required what are the essentials for every person who is a project manager so this is what you need to have if you are a project manager or a project coordinator whatever the terminology may be depending upon the nature of your company infrastructure or corporate structure the nature of the culture of the organization so number one project managers need to have a very holistic approach towards everything they need to look at all these aspects they will be the people who will be interconnecting all the critical elements throughout the life cycle and they will be having a bird's eye view a 360 degree approach that means while looking at schedule management we cannot ignore the cost management while looking at team we cannot in in involve uh, ignore the documentation right the next day is the conflict management because whenever we are talking about projects there will be conflicts because there are people people have different priorities and that is where the conflict management uh, technique the conflict management as a critical leadership quality has to naturally come to every project manager then we are talking about critical and rational thinking that is where you need to have an unbiased approach towards everything you also need to have a practical way of looking at things because eventually the project is supposed to be for the organization so the project manager has to think not just for himself or herself but he or she has to look at the overall objective on the broad level so there is where the rational thinking is there and of course we talk about good people skills also where everything about the project manager should have good emotional quotient emotional intelligence is very very important the way you communicate is also very critical because you will need to negotiate on the timelines sometimes you need to negotiate with the vendors to ensure that the materials fit into the particular budgetary allowance which is available for the project expenditures then influencing and persuasion trying to make the people get the best of their activities to ensure that the end product is only high in quality so yes it's all about leadership when you motivate people you encourage people you also have a rapport building which needs to be done with the team members the leader as in the form of a project manager also ensures that team members are communicating with each other and they are not uh, really putting their interests first it's all about how the project manager communicates to people with 
the project management philosophy and tries to in involve them in the project as far as the importance is concerned. Okay, now coming to the communication, which is which is a very very important element, which is what we are going to uh, look at right now. So this is what is communications. So when we are talking about communications management in projects, it is not about the spoken English or maybe the regional language or how you relate to. That is going to be the softer aspect of communications, which we have already mentioned about as far as the critical skills of a project manager are concerned. Project management over, over here and the communications which are involved is all about the information which needs to be flown to the right stakeholders at the right time. So the communication starts with the nature of the information which needs to be circulated. So one is the updates as you progress forward, as you make any particular milestone completion, all these are updates. If a particular variant has been developed and it has been tested and analyzed and the results need to be approved by some other stakeholders, there'll be reports which need to be circulated to the critical stakeholders to get their buy-ins so that your next phase can move on slowly. Then there are milestone completion uh, updates where you have completed the paper formula. Now the lab, lab trials have to begin. The lab work has been done. Now then the consumer trials have to begin. The machine uh, design is ready for the car engine. Now it is ready. Now we need to move forward with the testing and, and the lab trials again. If there are any emergencies where flags need to be raised, there are some critical uh, aspects such as uh, unforeseen circumstances. Maybe somebody is not well, a project team member has to be uh, changed immediately. There is going to be an emergency or a broader level emergency where there is something beyond the control of the organization. Maybe some natural calamity. So again, putting, uh, giving the kind of information, giving the kind of instructions to the team members, everything will be included under the project communications. And you will see that now communication is again directly related to the scope. The stakeholders are already involved. Communication will involve the budgets, which need to be approved for the vendor selection as well. Communication will also with, uh, is going to be involved with respect to risk management here. So you will see that communication, I've just connected you, connected one particular aspect to all the other critical elements which we talk about. And we also said something about how the communication will be done throughout the life cycle. Now, another model which we need to, need to be followed is depending upon where your teams are located. If it is a simple organization where you just have every team member sitting under one premises, then you will notice that communication becomes easy. You will notice that you will have to, uh, you will notice that it is easy to gather people and ensure that they are communicating with each other. But what happens when you are on global locations? Maybe you're talking about software industry projects where you, you have off-site development, offshore development. Then you have, uh, let's say, pharmaceutical or healthcare projects where you have a, re a research and development team sitting in one city. You have the manufacturing plant where all the large-scale trials will be undertaken. You'll have that in the outskirts of the city. You will have the clinical trials being conducted at some other center. So here there are multiple locations involved. And that is where you need to identify what should be the model. Is it going to be physical meetings all the time? Or is it going to be online meetings? Or is it going to be a hybrid model, which is a mix of physical and online meetings, depending upon the schedule and the need and the milestone. Of course, and when we talk about communications, we are talking also about what not to communicate in order to avoid the confusion and avoid the noise. I will come to that shortly, and uh, I would I would want you to take a look at this particular diagram over here. So, if you consider a project manager who's at the center of the entire universe with respect to projects, look at the kind of communication which is being undertaken with different types of stakeholders. So, with the project team, there will be a pulling of information with respect to the status updates, the reminders for completion of certain milestones reminders of the end deadline and the interim deadlines, asking them about the uh, prototype, prototype updates, asking them about the testing results and everything. And it is all about monitoring and controlling the phases because unless and until you communicate, 
you will not be able to monitor or even control the project. So that is what is happening with the project team. With the management board or the top level board or, or the sponsor maybe, it will be in the form of project reports, which is like a project report is a compiled active, a compiled document, which is collecting all the raw data, putting them in a proper format and then presenting it to the management board. Not every information bit is supposed to be discussed with the management board. Eventually, your higher ups will be interested in getting the broad level understanding. So you need to have the progress reports, you need to have the reviews there. And in case if there are any approvals, let's say there is a budget overshooting because of some really, really serious conditions. Maybe the management boards need to give you some additional buffers for conducting this project. That is one. Maybe extending the deadline if there has been something very, very critical, which is beyond your control as a project manager. Not always. Then there'll be some approvals which are going to be necessary. That is supposed to be taken from the management board. Or it could be even with respect to other aspects. Other aspects with respect to um, permissions for something. Or let's say sometimes what happens is the management board or the sponsor initially starts with maybe a requirement of creating maybe five to six different prototypes for a particular product. And every product will be then exhibited it will be demonstrated in front of the management board or the sponsor or the end user maybe who has sanctioned the project. And one particular component will be taken ahead for the next activities because you cannot move on with all the components, right? So one particular prototype will be tested and that prototype will be taken over for higher level trials. So even that is the kind of communication. Those are also the kind of approvals which you need to check out with with respect to your role as a project manager. And then lastly, we are talking about the handover. We are talking about the handover to the operations team. It is after the project has been completely finished, where you are giving the design, where you're giving the sample piece, sample prototypes, so that operations people know exactly what is to be manufactured and how it is to be manufactured. Other type of communication is all about seeking permissions, seeking licenses, communication with the vendors about deadlines, about the lead times of the materials, communication with the finance team for the approval of budgets for purchasing of a, of a particular raw material and everything else. Okay, so this is, this is what we talk about communications in project management. Now, if you have to look at effectiveness of communications, number one is you need to involve the right stakeholder at the right time. Now, there are two aspects of it. One is because people are full of egos, full of emotions. And if you don't involve some stakeholder at one particular, at the right time, maybe later that person may be upset because he or she was not involved at the right time. Now, this is something which usually doesn't happen in bigger organizations, but sometimes exceptions do exist. And if that, if that particular stakeholder is very, very important and has a very big influence overall, then that, that particular stakeholder can become a hindrance in your project if just because he or she was not involved at the right time. The other aspect is because every stakeholder over here will have their own priorities. A very simple example. Let us assume that uh, we are running a project and let us assume that each one of you is a project manager. I give you the liberty of applying this particular concept to your own workplaces. Maybe you can relate to examples. The simplest example is that you have, in, you have called for a meeting to, in, uh, to discuss all the important milestones. And one particular person, let's say quality control director, he has been left out of communications by mistake. The meeting is going to be scheduled at, uh, at 3 p.m. on 22nd of March 2022. Now, what happens is the communication has been sent to all stakeholders except the quality director. And on Monday, you suddenly realize that, oh, I have not involved him. His decisions are critical. Otherwise, this meeting is not going to be useful. And then you approach him on Monday morning and say, okay, let's say John, for example, John, Mr. John, the quality director, he is supposed to be, he's requested to be present in a meeting. Now, Mr. John is definitely not going to be 
available because he already has some other plans. His timelines were not checked before and that's why he cannot be a part of the meeting. This is a very simple example about how we are supposed to inform the right stakeholder. The other stakeholder with, will, with, will be with respect to their inputs in the project. Let's say operations management people as stakeholders were not involved when the project management plan was being made, when the procurement or everything was, was being made. Do you know the danger of this? In absence of people from the operations team, you cannot get the inputs of how you need to manufacture the product later on and how you need to design the processes accordingly. I personally have seen projects where we have completed, the people have completed that thing, that entire outcome. And then when it came to the scale up and when it came to trial of manufacturing operations, there we said that, okay, this process cannot work because we do not have this particular equipment which is compatible for the process. That is exactly where you need to involve the right stakeholders at the right time. You know, if you really go to see, you can come up with multiple and many, many examples with respect to this particular statement, which I've made over here. So my little request to you, all of you is that after, after this webinar is completed, please go back and while you're trying to reflect upon something, try to relate to all these examples, which you just uh, heard me speaking right now. Try to understand how did you feel anything when you were in, in this particular state, uh, state of situation? Have you ever observed something? Have you ever heard of these examples? Have you seen this thing happening? Try to make a note of this. Second is circulation of the right information at the right time. So obviously we spoke about this a little bit before, but also about when we talk about the right information at the right time, it is all about even connecting with the stakeholders, connecting with everybody else and telling them that, okay, now we have finished this particular stage and now it is going to be the part of the other stakeholders to come in and finish their activities accordingly. It is also about the passing of information from one department to the other in a chronological order. For example, if you are going to talk about a particular software development, the developers have developed that code and the next step is to test the code, analyze the code and look out for gaps. Here, if the software developers do not communicate with the team ahead of them, that now their job has to begin, everything is going to be coming to a halt, right? The developers will see that, okay, we have done our jobs, but the people who are there, they have not taken forward. Now, why wasn't it taken forward? Is it because the communication was not sent to them that we have done our activities, now please take it forward? That could be one of the reasons. And that is where we talk about having the right communication at the right time and circulating the right information at the right time. And then of course, we're talking about documentation of the absolute critical information. So while there is a lot of dump of raw data which could be generated in all projects, the critical information has to be stored in a particular format. Now, what are the examples of critical communications, critical informations? One is if an additional budget has, budget has been sanctioned because the project was running beyond budgets, that has to be, that sanction, the email or the letter of sanction, that has to be stored perfectly and it has to be produced when asked for explanation. Or for example, there is a scope change. Um, let me give you an example. If you are in a company, I, I used to work in a company where we used to develop all these pharmaceutical formulations for our clients across the globe. Now, one particular client had started off with a project where we said that we want to develop a um, strawberry flavored syrup for children. Okay. And uh, we started with the product development. We started with the necessary procurements. We started with all the trials. And then while we were just about to complete the prototype, the client came and told, told us an important update that the marketing team had said that strawberry is not a flavor of their choice. Uh, they tried to uh, take up strawberry, but now they want an orange flavor. Now what happens is this scope has been changed. We need to procure a separate straw orange flavor. We need to procure additional materials to carry out the variants in the orange flavor. And that is why there is going to be 
more time that is going to be required and additional budget for more materials that we need to restart our trials with a new flavor. Now for this, if certain things happen, you need to first go and talk to the management and say that, okay, this was the original scope which was agreed upon. Now the scope has changed, the schedule and the cost is going to face an impact. So please ensure that we are given this permission to use more funds for this. This is critical information. This has to be emailed correctly because then there is everything on records. There is an information from the client giving an approval for overspending on the budget and they will even pay you more. And there is an approval system internally as well as externally. Now, this is an example of critical information. Then again, like I said, there'll be many, many examples which, we, which you can really identify with respect to communications and documentation of critical information. And lastly, we are talking about other critical points where when we talk about effective, effectiveness in communications, we are talking about conducting your team meetings or online conference calls very effectively. So your everything should be planned in advance for ensuring that you do not miss out somebody very, very influential or whose opinions matter in your project completion. Make sure when you run your effective team meetings, you're talking about, you're ensuring that you're circulating the right agendas, you're circulating your pre-reads right in advance, at least minimum three days in advance. You're booking the right kind of uh, conference halls or maybe all those softer nuances which we are talking about. Also, when you're talking about effective meetings, it is also about circulating the point-wise agenda so that people know exactly what to discuss. Sometimes we may also go on uh, putting agenda with time slots. In a two hours meeting, there's be 20 hours, just, sorry, 20 minutes to brush up from the previous meeting. Maybe one hour to discuss about the updates, maybe something else to discuss about uh, some other additional uh, features which need to be added and so on. Everyone needs to be given a chance to speak. Everyone needs to understand the concept. And of course, the behavioral patterns are also very, very important. You need to ensure that all the mobiles are off. In conference calls especially, it is very, very critical to ensure that everyone is keeping it noise-free, keeping themselves on mute so that no one else disturbs them. All these things are necessary. The second point of your uh, of uh, effectiveness in project communications, critically, which we need to observe, is determination of frequency of emails and frequency of the reports and updates which need to be sent and even the recipients which need to be involved. What happens is if you have an email and if you just keep on marking the carbon copies to everybody else, you can, you can just keep on ceasing everybody else and then there's a confusion. If you are going to talk about a particular stakeholder who is going to be approving that particular stakeholder has to be marked in the two section and not the other ones. The people marked in the CC would be obviously those who need to be informed that this decision has been approved or undertaken. By and large, all these are done so that project information is stored. And of course, when we talk about the formats of communication, emails obviously for documenting the critical information, keeping the emails and storing them on your servers or your hard drives to for quick references. There are messaging systems. Some people use WhatsApp, but WhatsApp should not be used for taking decisions. WhatsApp are, are for quick communication on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, if there is any particular prototype which has been approved from the research and development unit, and that needs to be taken for manufacturing trials. The quick updates can be done one-to-one -one or maybe one too many in WhatsApp groups in a project communications group. You can have, we used to have typical project groups on WhatsApp. Then you can use WhatsApp, you can circulate uh, emergencies and the minute wise updates for them, the WhatsApp is okay, but not for other critical information sharing or maybe if, if something very, very confidential, then you need to stop WhatsApp, emails are preferred. And of course, there are other systems where there are in inbuilt in uh, communication channels like maybe some um, uh, members chat or something like that. I've seen that in many organizations where you can actually transfer files from one department to the other. You can transfer the soft copies. These are again for quick updates, but uh, these are necessary. And lastly, we are also talking about the enterprise resource planning softwares, where if you want to publish an update you just publish this on the database in the company and it will be available on the dashboard for everybody to see. 
right from the people who are working in the project at the lower most bottom layer to the ceo of the company who understand what is the status of the project well this was all about it okay so this is mitakshara signing off and uh, you can write to jayanti@simplyaccess.com she will get back to you